Hey guys, welcome to uh, a short overview of the discussion board assignment this week. Uh, I just want to touch on um, what we're looking for uh, on this particular assignment. Uh, so basically what you're asked to do is research the judicial system of your home state um, or a different state of your choice. But I would suggest you try to use your home state since this is an online class. Um, uh, we are from throughout the United States, so uh, students often learn better by reading um, what other states uh, do in terms of their judicial organization and structure and the selection of their judges. So uh, I would use your home state um, as uh, your topic for this particular discussion assignment. All right, so some of the things you have to, you have to do is uh, discuss whether your judges are appointed or elected, how many levels of appeals courts are there, and I'll go into that here in just a minute. What venue, geographical area, and jurisdiction subject matter does each trial court in your state have authority to hear? Uh, and then you're de to describe, given your state's geography and court system structure, what issues are likely to arise regarding venue for different criminal and civil cases. And then I'll give you an example of what that means, okay? So uh, hopefully to help you out. So basically what you're gonna do in module two, when you when you click open uh, the state judicial system and judges, when you click open that particular link, you're gonna have two resources here. And so the one that you're gonna use to evaluate your state's court structure, and then it gives you some ideas to how your state is set up. Uh, I'm sure you can also go to um, uh, your state's uh, judicial system, their homepage uh, via Google search or something, but uh, please note that, that this resource is available to you. All right, and so if I were to click on that, this resource right here, then what that's going to do is going to take me to the state court's website. All right, and so um, what you probably have to do in terms of uh, your judges is you're going to have to do some independent research on your own, right? Uh, in, in describing how uh, your judges reach the bench uh, in terms of whether or not they're appointed or elected. Um, now, some states uh, you'll find is interesting. Some states that their judges are appointed for life, just like the federal judges are. In some states, um, they're Judges are nominated by the governor, and then the legislature has to approve the appointment. Um, and in some states, it's an election um, following a, a gubernatorial appointment. So there's an array of ways that judges reach the bench. And so that's why it's important, I think, that you all just take a look at your home state. So you get an idea as to, as to how that happens. Okay, so let me go down here, and we're going to take a look at the state of Washington. All right, so... Um, I'm just going to do this real briefly because I don't want to spend too much time on this and take up bloody valuable time, but I just wanted to talk about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the court structure chart. And so this is basically what the state of Washington looks like. Let me get this down here. There we go. So when you're looking at um, the venue, for example, and the jurisdiction uh, of each trial court, this is what we're talking about here, all right? So, for example, uh, in the state of Washington, you have municipal courts and district courts. Uh, these would be courts of limited jurisdiction that our textbook describes. Uh, these are probably the more common courts. If you've received the traffic citation, you've gone to one of these type of courts. Um, and so these are these really are misdemeanor type courts and fraction type courts. So these are really sort of the workhorses of state courts, because superior courts or trial courts of general jurisdiction tend to handle the more serious crimes such as felonies, uh, more serious civil cases. And while those are um, not necessarily uncommon. Uh, the number of cases as compared to those heard at, at the courts of limited jurisdiction is much less, okay? So, so the state of Washington, again, we have municipal courts and district courts. And so here you can see the type of cases that they hear. In other words, these are the type of cases that these courts are authorized to hear. So misdemeanor cases, 
uh, traffic and other violations. Uh, district courts are allowed to hear uh, torts or contract claims uh, up to 75,000, and they have exclusive jurisdiction over small claims up to 5,000. So for example, if I lived in Washington and I was going to sue somebody for $2,000, I could not sue them here in Superior Court because Superior Court doesn't have jurisdiction because uh, it's under $5,000. So the district court in the state of Washington would have jurisdiction over those type of small civil claims. All right. So that's the example that we're looking for here. So this gives you the type of venue and the jurisdiction of each of the trial courts. So you would indicate in, in your response that, you know, courts of limited jurisdiction in the state of Washington are municipal courts and district courts, and they have jurisdiction over the following type of cases. Uh, and that could be superior courts, all right? So superior court cases, uh, again, handle the more serious ones, superior courts in the state of Washington, uh, felony matters, so, you know, burglary, homicide, so forth, uh, uh, domestic relations, so obviously family court, exclusive juvenile, meaning in the state of Washington, this court, Superior Court, hears all matters involving juveniles. So that means that they would have subject matter jurisdiction over juvenile cases. So if you were a juvenile, you wouldn't have your case heard in district court or municipal court because they do not have jurisdiction. All right, so the state of Washington also has a court of appeals, and then they have the state Supreme Court. So when you look at the number of levels of appeals that you would have here in the state of Washington, so what you would pretty much argue is that uh, in the state of Washington, municipal court and district courts, if somebody wants to appeal a judicial ruling in one of these two courts, they would appeal it to the Superior Court. So we're just gonna go up to the Superior Court. All right, so that's one level. Uh, Superior Courts, if you want to appeal a decision in Superior Court, you take it to the Court of Appeals. Now in the state of Washington, uh, the reason we have this arrow going up here is because all death penalty cases are appealed to the Washington Supreme Court automatically. Uh, many states that have the death penalty are similar. Uh, California, for example, is very similar. So anytime there's a death penalty case that's heard in Superior Court, it is automatically appealed to the state Supreme Court, which is why this arrow is here. All right, so if you were to ask me then how many levels of appeal are there in the state of Washington, I would say one, two, three. There are three levels of appeals in the state of Washington. Okay, so that's really what we're looking for here when we, when we talk about uh, the levels of appeals and uh, geographical area or venue and jurisdiction, all right? So these courts, again, are going to have limited jurisdiction because they're going to be focusing on the area uh, and the county in which they're located, same way as Superior Court. So um, typically, for example, in California, which has 58 counties, each county has at least one Superior Court. So in California, there's at least one superior court in each county, and I suspect in Washington it's the same way. Obviously, the more populous counties have more superior courts, but each state, each county would have at least one superior court, okay? Uh, and then you'd have your municipal and district courts. And like I said, it, these are your courts of limited jurisdiction. So these are courts that most of us probably deal with uh, if we have any run-in with the law, okay? Because most of us probably don't go out and commit felonies, okay? So the other part of your assignment then is given your state's geography and court system structure, what issues are likely to arise regarding venue for different criminal and civil cases. Um, so the easiest explanation on this is that um, uh, not all counties obviously are equal because it's oftentimes going to be based on population. All right. Uh, so typically in your county seat, uh, you might find a trial court of general jurisdiction and maybe uh, a trial court of limited jurisdictions, all right? But rural areas, I mean, areas that are on the outskirts of major metropolitan areas, and, and many of you probably live in areas that might be described as somewhat rural or um, limited population. Um, these type of courts, superior court, courts of appeals, even your superior courts, are gonna be located in, in more populated areas, uh, usually, these are going to be found in your state capital. So your Supreme Court might be in your state capital. Depending on the size of your state, you may have uh, more than one court of appeals. For example, California, because of the state size, has six appellate court districts within the state of California. Okay. Um, 
so when you're looking at trying to come up with implications for for the your state court structure um, just realize that in in many rural areas uh, oftentimes trial courts of general jurisdiction are going to be focused or centered more in urban areas so you may have to travel some distance to go to that court uh, whether it's, for example juvenile court um, if you have a juvenile that's been arrested and has to go to juvenile court uh, those courts, uh, depending on how your county is structured, uh, may not be in every community. Uh, you may have to travel some distance to, to have your case heard. Same way you're, if you're suing somebody or business for uh, a large amount of money, uh, you may have to travel some distance because those courts aren't really available in some rural areas. Uh, I offered an example for the city of Los Angeles, LA County specifically, uh, and it's a good example of venue implications because in this particular LA Times article, uh, it highlights the fact that uh, homeless people aren't cited into local courts within the county of Los Angeles. And you have to understand LA County is a huge court structure. Um, and so the bottom line being, as you read in the article, is some homeless people have to travel 70 miles to go to court. Uh, and they'd have to take a bus and they have to have money means to get there so oftentimes that's not readily available and so they fail to show up to court and hence warrants are issued um, so take a look at that i think that serves as a really good example that you could reference in your paper when we get to that point in one of your coming milestone assignments of some of the implications associated with venue so we're looking at uh, the the structure of your your state court system, and then the geographical area of your particular state. So think about those issues as you work on your discussion uh, this week, okay? Again, please make sure that uh, this is a great resource here, so make sure you use um, this resource, National Center for State Courts, uh, as a means to help you with this discussion assignment, okay? I think that's it, guys. Other than that, have a good week, and uh, I'll see you in Brightspace.